Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and we're going to take a review of the X6100. Where is it? Oh, look at that, the X6100. I got a camera pointed at me, I got a camera pointed directly at the radio. We've got two different video capture things going on here. The camera pointed at the radio is a little out of sync, but hopefully the picture's better and we can read what's on the screen that way. I have the SD card for the update. Once you put that in the SD card slot, we can turn it on. All right, let's turn it on, and it's going to start booting the firmware right away. This is firmware version 1.1.4 from February 17th, and this includes the app and the base. The app is February 16th, and the base is February 15th. And while we're doing this description, this description, while we're doing this uh, firmware update, there is a link in the description down below. That's what I meant to say. Link in the description down below uh, where you can get a discount on this radio or any other thing from Radiodity. I'm going to pop the SD card out. So no more SD card. And now we turn it on and it will be on the latest base version of the firmware took a long time to start up a little longer than usual let's turn the volume down we got some good signals coming in all right so the next thing we need to do is system settings and then we need to roll over to firmware upgrade and this is the software that runs the SD card not the SD card the SDR that's inside here so we'll do firmware upgrade again and so now we've got a choice here and you guys can't see it on the screen, but I can see it and it's only one choice. So it kind of doesn't matter. I'm going to hit the upgrade button at the bottom and it starts the upgrade right away without any question or concern or care. It just goes right in. This was a big pucker factor moment for me in the beginning when I did this the very first time. Oh no, I just wanted to see what it would do if it would ask any questions or tell me anything. All right, so it does it very unceremoniously. You can hear some relays clicking inside the radio, but I still think that we need to reboot. If you go over to system info, it'll tell you the version numbers that you're running with, and they both look right to me, but I always reboot after this. So we hold down the power key, and you can hear a little speaker hiss noise going on, which means that it has accepted the power off. And now we turn the power back on, hear a little relay click, and it comes up with the boot logo. And we'll be good to go with the latest version. We'll double check those versions again. Then we'll start looking at the uh, QA testing, what's going on with all the firmware changes. All right, so we're back. We've got some good signals on the waterfall. Let's go in and look at system settings, system info. And where did it go? All right, we've got version 1.1.4, February 16th, 2022 for the app and 1.1.4, February 15th, 2022 for the base. That is absolutely correct. All right, so the first thing that they did was they added an FFT uh, peak hold switch. So let's go, whoop, let's go back out of there. Can we go right out? No, we got to hit exit first. Then we hit gen for general. Nope, we got to hit exit again. Then we hit gen for general to make sure we're on the general menu, which we already are. And then display settings, which we already are. And then, well, we aren't already are. Display settings, FFT peak hold. And it's currently set to on. I'm going to make that the multifunction knob by hitting that button, which moves it up to here. And you can see that it's on. And you can see there's a little bit of color in the background there. And now I've turned it off. So you'll see those green signals with nothing behind them. And then when you turn it on, you'll see that there's a, a gray ghost image of where that signal used to be. I like that setting, that works. So, all right, option number one, check, it works, it does the thing. I'm actually kind of surprised. Fix the bug gateway, can't save in WLAN setting page. All right, so this is gonna be a little more difficult. We're gonna go into system settings. We're gonna go into WLAN, and I'm gonna turn the Wi-Fi switch on by hitting edit. Yep, all right, so that's on. It's going to scan for Wi-Fi's. Yeah, I said Wi-Fi's. All right, didn't find any. Oh, there we go. Now we found one. Auto Connect is on. That is the wrong IP address, so that didn't work. Rolling the multifunction knob isn't working. Config, Auto Connect is fine. Using Auto Connect will cause your radio to be slower at boot up. I'm going to set this for DHCP by hitting Edit. 
let's try and hit connect and see if that will do me any good. It's trying. All right, it didn't complain one way or the other. We lost our saved network scan. Nope, it didn't find it. Scan. Okay, so we're still having trouble with that, but we're here to try and check out the gateway setting. And I'm going to change this from 192.168.3.1 to 192.68.3.2, if possible. And then that should save when we go out. So there's that. Two. Then we got to come down here. And I think we need to hit enter. And then we need to hit this X to close it. All right, so it says dot two. I'm gonna exit. I'm gonna go back in. It's doing a refresh thing here. And it says dot one. So that did not save. It, it also didn't save the DHCP. I'm gonna go back down to config. I'm gonna give it one more shot by hitting edit, go out to the end and get rid of the dot one and make it dot two. We're gonna press enter. And then we're going to exit. It says dot two. So then we hit config to jump off to another one. We'll go back into WLAN. It's going to scan again, even though we didn't tell it to scan anything. It's going to take a half a second. It's going to pop up the IP address of 192.168.3.1 again. So we tried it twice, and both times it didn't work. So that didn't work out. Change RX volume from 0 to 50 to 0 to 55, 5 dB more than previous version. Okay, so we go out here, and this is probably going to get a little loud. It goes to 55. He sounds better at point nine. Okay. That is a meaningful change in volume. You can definitely hear the volume get louder from 50 to 55. So that definitely works. I turned it all the way down so it's not bugging us while we're doing this thing. All right, so two out of three so far. Number four, change CW decoder's threshold to a higher level, better robustness, but needs higher signal-to-noise ratio. All right, let's go find some CW signals. First, we want to change this into CW mode. And then I want to change the speed at which we tune. And I want to tune all the way down to the CW portion of the band. I'm going to do a 14030. Turn the volume up. I need to, yep. Somebody's calling CQ. I need to change the filter. Okay, and it says decoder threshold. So we go into app, modem, change the mode to CW. I think my signal to noise ratio is pretty good. You guys can see it in the waterfall. And it's saying word per minute is 20 and I've got the decoder set at 
15, so let's see if I set it at 20 if it works any better. I'm not getting any decoding at all. All right, so two out of four, I would say that does not work. Calibrate the RXS meter to give more accuracy. I think we're just gonna have to take their word on it. They're talking about this S meter right here and it's doing the S meter thing. The SWR meter isn't doing anything because I'm not transmitting or, or anything right now, but the S meter is moving to indicate signal strength and it's got a little peak meter on it. I have no way of knowing whether this is any better or any worse than it used to be. So let's see what's next. Number six. So we'll give them two and a half out of five. Number six, add ALC level indicator, the top right of the band scope area below the TX power string. All right, I figured it out. So here's the deal. We have, <laughs> it shows up right over here, which is where I thought it would show up, but it only shows up when you're actually doing anything with a digital mode or possibly uh, yeah, when you're transmitting at all, which I get it. There's no reason to meter something that isn't happening, but I figured there would be like a, a empty spot where it would show up. It only shows up when there is actually something happening. So I am running FT8 on my other screen over here. And if I hit enable TX, well, let's do an easier one. Let's just do tune. So you can see that there's now an ALC meter there and it says ALC 100. If we look at the guidelines they give us, ALC level equal to zero is your overdriving. So decrease the input signal level. We're not overdriving, we got 100. ALC level equal to 100 is your underdriving, so increase the signal level. I'm gonna go into WSJTX and I'm gonna move the power meter up all the way to the top. We are one bar below the top. I moved it all the way up to the top, so now we're all the way at the top. And I'm going to hit tune and it should be less than 100. Nope. Well, that's all the power I can give it. I can't give it no more power. Uh, but 100 is better than no at all, none at all. When doing digi, the audio baseband signals are almost constant amplitude. Adjust the sound card volume to make the ALC level between 20 and 80 to get good linearity. Okay, let me take it down to half, half power. And let's hit tune and see what we get. Yep, we're still at 100. Let's take it down to one quarter power. Let's hit tune and see what we get. Still at 100. Let's take it down to very little power. And we're still at 100. Let's take it down to none power. And we're still at 100 with no power output. And we're in the wrong mode. So let's switch that over to USB digital. Why is it doing that? Okay, let me go back into my WSGTX settings. So I just did all that for nothing. Radio, rig control, split operation, none. Let's turn split off. Okay, now we've got split off. Let's hit tune. We're still at 100 with no power settings. And we're still at the, we're still splitting. Let's turn the split off. which is in radio settings two. All right, split is now off. And we're still at 100, but we didn't split. We're still, we're transmitting on the right sideband in the right mode, we're still at 100. And I am transmitting zero power according to WSJTX. Let's go back to full power. Okay, and now it's at one. All right, so we need to move this power slider down to get more. Interesting. All right, so I'm at 84. 
Okay, so now we're at 100. Let's see where we need to go. Okay. Interesting. And what we're looking for, according to them, we stop it from tuning. Okay, now we've got it figured out the how it's going to make adjustments. Let's see. When doing Digi, the audio baseband signals are almost constant amplitude. Adjust the sound card volume to make the ALC level between 20 and 80 to get good linearity. 20 and 80 is a big range. I am currently at 50. And we're getting 11 out. Let's pull it back down some more. 75. Oh, wrong direction. 14. So halfway between 20 and 80 is 60. 40, 50. Yeah, okay, so you can see the power and you can see the ALC meter and everything looks good there. So that's how you do that. And what you, what you do is on the WSJTX screen, on the right-hand side next to your uh, communications, next to your QSO settings, there is a power slider. And if you move that up and down, that is how I am adjusting the ALC. So interesting. We did figure it out. It does appear to work. Uh, only time will tell when I win the FT8 off on Thursday night uh, using the QRP multiplier um, how well this does in fact work. Optimize the firmware flashing logic. Baseboard will boot up itself after flashed the firmware. I don't know what to take from that. I don't know what that means. All right, in the base, we fixed a bug built in mic feedback to speaker sometimes. I haven't heard that, but I haven't done a whole lot of microphone use on this. I don't do a whole lot of voice on this radio at this point. I've done some, it works well. It does the job, but I don't remember hearing any feedback to the speaker and I wouldn't have any way to test that it doesn't anymore because I couldn't prove that it did before. Fixed a bug, baseboard, sometimes not booting a power on. I haven't seen that. Maybe that's that thing they're talking about where it goes to zero and, and nothing shows up, but I'm gonna go make some contacts with this radio. We have, let's, let's, let's run a tally. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus five, is 12 and out of those we had one two and a half three three things i can guarantee work better than last time now we've got an alc meter that's better than last time the swr meter works that's better than last time so definitely a positive upgrade on the firmware and uh, keep those radios rolling. Either way, there is a video right over there. Nope, right over there. I got the camera mirrored, so when I look at the radio, it looks like I'm looking right over there. There's another video for you. And uh, thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.